might have come from somewhere else But this is where we found ourselves Welcome to the local show People you work with, people you know Welcome to another edition of the local show here at Grassroots Community Network I'm Eric Scarvin, your host guys Still coming up on 20 years of the local show You'll have to stick around for our anniversary show this winter today though i'm joined by a summer guest from about nine years ago he's the founder of pristine riders he bestowed this jersey upon me this pristine riders jersey it's the founder of pristine riders kent blackmer back on the local show buddy great to see you well, thank you for it's been inviting a while. me i really appreciate the opportunity it's been a treat hanging out uh, and you've even had a treat maybe uh Bake Kent some homemade organic cookies. So if you guys are ever guests on the show, you can earn cookies too. Well, you Is know, that I, a was that a treat? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, what what I noted to you earlier when we were speaking is that I, I have to tell you how you've taken the ball with this program and how it struck your imagination and how it's prompted you to create this trash crush thing has really been striking to me. You know, I. I, I didn't necessarily know how to keep the momentum going once these jerseys was distributed because, you know, I knew fundamentally that it involved a great deal of uh, fundraising. And uh, I found that to be pretty awkward sometimes because I was so <laughs> involved with the program. When people were not interested, I, 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 I struggled with that rejection, you know, frankly. Yeah. That. So. Um, you've been uh, remarkable in terms of getting the nonprofit status for Pristine Riders and keeping the mojo going. Um, and I think, you know, hopefully we can develop a synergy between our talents to keep really what I think is a, you know, an absolutely fabulous program, you know, going. So let's hope. When I, when you uh we're on the show and presented this idea of bike riding and cleaning up litter i just was like wow biking and the environment two of my favorite things which are so interrelated obviously we're enjoying nature out on these bike rides whether it's road biking mountain biking i love fat biking on snow in the winter um uh, we're even offering e-biking instruction through sundog athletics this summer any kind of biking and um as we were talking before the show when you're on a bike ride, you're slowing down to start to connect to nature a little more. Start noticing things, beautiful or things like litter, because we're going slower. And then when we stop, Kent, to pick up litter, talk about that. Because it's not just stopping to pick up litter sometimes. <laughs> well, you know, let's face it. I, I, I suspect that people may think that I, I'm mildly insane. But, but I, I have gotten as I mentioned, to the point where I, when I get off and I'm going to pick up a thrown out water bottle or beer can, Modelo can or whatever, I kind of stop and I look around and I see this incredible visage. And so it's, it's like a centering thing. And I, I feel connected by just the, that simple act of saying, I'm going to pay homage to the fact that I get to be alive in this place. And it, it is, instead of it being a pain in the neck to get off my bike, unclip, hope I don't get picked off by a car. Um, you know, as you and I talked about, one of the things is, is the safety aspect of this we want to make sure we emphasize because, you know, no piece of trash is worth being hurt or killed when, if we're, you know, encouraging others to join us. But... Uh, it's really pretty striking, and now that I've kind of gotten into that avenue of of, of touching the universe, man, it's it's like instead of it being a pain, it's like my chance to give thanks, and uh, it's it's transformational. It's really strange. I think it could help people, you know, if they have depression, which I suffer from a little bit, and uh, it uh, can certainly as I what was the phrase. Um, a, a, from a very lowbrow activity can create a very highbrow experience in this beauty of, of uh, where we live. Reminds me of tree hugging and forest bathing. When you stop and kind of smell the roses, when you stop and give a quick hug to a tree, or when you stop and pick up a piece of litter, 
you may, if you're aware, you can make that connection. Mm -hmm. And the more you do it, right, it's, it's just more and more satisfying on so many levels, right? The level two of, you know, connecting with nature, but the level of stewardship, right? And the next time you bike through that area that you've cleaned and that feeling you have of, look at how, I mean, that pride, look at how clean this is. Look at how sweet this is. Mm. Look at how much, this is the way it should be, right? Pristine Aspen, pristine Roaring Fork Valley. So it's rewarding on so many levels, right? Well, you know, uh, I don't want to be naive here. I mean, there are times where it was, it's far from a Zen experience. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, not, not oh, glamorous. And I get in, I, and I'm like, <laughs> man, I thought one piece of trash. Now the, the infestation, what do I get myself into, you know? <laughs> so it's not always, you know, <laughs> such a wonderful deal, I, I tell you. But uh, there are situations in which that, that, that phenomenon occurs. And so, you know, it, it's, it's, it's cool because it, it's such an easy process. Now, what I hope we get a chance to delve into is how we can try to figure out ways to get the public writ large to make sure there's n never any intentional trash that we end up having to pick up. I, you know, I, I'm convinced sometimes that people, I suspect they just, you know, they're worried potentially of drinking and driving. Right. Okay. Right. So they throw their, throw away the evidence, yeah, basically. you know, yeah. and, and I, can see that. I, I get it, but it, Sure puts a burden on us who don't want to see this refuse in where we live. You know? and, we're, and we were talking, uh, you know, before the show about this too. It's like reckless, right? They throw it out, or they have lunch and they just leave their stuff there, or careless. They allow yeah. it to blow out. You know, the article in the Aspen Times this week, thanks to to Ray, their editor, who wrote that beautiful article about um, pristine riders, our trash crush event, which we'll talk about on the show today. And then just kind of the sources of litter, construction waste, mm. the school areas that are very heavily littered near our markets. If you go by City Market and Clark's, litter right. all over the place. Yep. So the sourcing is critical, right? If we mm. can address that, we're not just on this endless treadmill of right. you guys keep creating it and we'll just keep picking it up. How, you know, if we can clamp down on that or just get people to be more aware and care more, mm. that's the trick, I think, is just... Well, Take responsibility I, on the front end of that. I, I, I'm wondering if, you know, I, I, I don't want to see signage everywhere, but there's electronic signage that discusses throwing, you know, lit cigarettes out and to watch for bears and yep. so forth. Yep. So hopefully we can find an avenue to just make people more aware because, you know, I, I remember so vividly when Lady Bird Johnson started that. I guess I'm kind of divulging my age here, but you <laughs> it's know, okay. It, it was really striking, and I can remember they had a, an Indian with a tear. Yes, you know, I remember that. That was one of the most and famous it's like, from the 70s. I'd like to you know, get our society to revisit that because I, I think – you know, it's it's good for people's mental health to have an appreciation for the world we live in. You know, it's yeah. like, uh, and I, I don't know, you know, there's so much going on on the national thing to think we're going to make any avenues right now. But I hope I hope there's ways we can figure out how to make this an extremely aware issue for, for, for all of our citizens. I think know, if but, we act, you know, the kind of the cliche act, you know, locally. Yep inspire yep. globally or affect yep. globally yeah, yeah, yeah. if we could keep building our local efforts and of course local efforts all over the country and the world yep. expand that out through social media yep. which is so powerful and such a great positive effect of social media or television like today mm -hmm. we can reach thousands of people sure. and if we're all picking up our pristine riders message just one piece of litter each bike ride yep. which also is a greeting for pristine riders so if you see another rider out with the jersey on Give them a number one. Now be safe. And let's let's close the opening of the show with safety. If you're wearing a bright jersey, I actually our new Sundog Athletic kits are C dot orange. <laughs> the jerseys, uh, road bike, mountain bike, uh, other type snowshoeing is all bright orange. Wearing bright colors uh, with trash crush events. Of course, we wear the C dot safety vests. Stay all the way off as far to the right as you can, right? Always spacing is crucial between I you and the cars. Also, I would also suggest that people not be listening to music. Very, great point. Great point because then you may not hear that traffic and hear that threat right. I mean, coming you, up you, on you. You want to have all your wits 
right. about because the fact of the matter is this you know is a dangerous enterprise what we're asking people to join us in doing and so extreme caution has to be the order of the day and right. pick your battles yes uh, which we also right. discussed with certain roads or paths yep. are very light traffic yep so maybe you're not out on highway too yep. you know that's pretty sketchy between yep. the airport and the landfill and absolutely the county has now hired a contractor to do that section but yeah you don't have to go out on crazy traffic pick your spot pick your favorite spot maybe it's a trail like Hunter Creek Trail. Oh, we yeah. see a lot of these filled dog bags that are left. And that's a pretty simple um, matter. We see of just Fiji bottles and Kleenexes. getting off to the side of the trail on those. You know. so, so pick your favorite spot. Go do some stewardship. We're going to take a quick break. Kent, rehydrate for the main body of the show and more trash talk. <laughs> but I want to thank our summer underwriters for making these shows possible. June, July, August, September. We're going to wrap our series here in the next few weeks, guys, in the month of September. I want to thank Aspen Square, Haiti Children. Independence Pass Foundation, Klug Properties, Local Spirits, Paradise Bakery, Picking County Solid Way Center, The Hope Barn, Sundog Athletics, and Wheeler Opera House. Last but not least, we're going to go to our only break. We'll be gone just two minutes. We'll be back with Kent Blackmer, founder of Pristine Riders, and the executive director, yours truly. Mm -hmm. So don't go away. <laughs> At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. At the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Wanna live like a local? Help us reduce food waste, a major contributor to climate change. You can help in three simple ways. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. Collect unused scraps for compost. Buy ugly fruits and vegetables. Reduce, Reduce food, food waste. waste. Live, Live like, like a, a local. local. Brought to you by Paradise Bakery and Gelateria, serving Aspen for 42 years. Providing exceptional service for over 50 years, Aspen Square features studio and larger condominiums for nightly rental with an ideal downtown Aspen location. They offer fully equipped kitchens, wood-burning fireplaces, and private balconies with full hotel-style services and gracious hospitality. Aspen Square is proud to support the local show. Independence Pass Foundation, celebrating 35 years of encouraging stewardship, safety, and appreciation of Independence Pass. Sundog Athletics is your opportunity to experience the thrills of adventure sports, offering mountain and road biking instruction, fitness hiking, and Aspen's exclusive instructional canoeing and e-biking adventures. Locally owned and operated, Local Spirits has low prices, a convenient location next to Exxon Gas Station with parking, and is Aspen's exclusive cigar dealer. 3% back with our loyalty program. Carla Hope Miller, an astrologer and sonic alchemist at the Hope Barn, invites you to discover peace and tranquility through her transformative sound healing sessions. Utilizing a harmonious blend of sound bowls, chimes, gongs, and other instruments, Carla guides you on a journey of inner connection, helping you come home to your soul. Welcome to the local show, people you work with. Welcome back to the local show with some trash talk. Good kind, guys. We're picking up litter throughout the Roaring Fork Valley through our organization, Pristine Riders. And Kent, we were honored with an award, a Picking County Cares Community Service Award. You were at the uh, award ceremony. Can you tell us about it? We actually have the plaque right here uh, we're going to show to our viewers. But can you tell us a little bit about the ceremony and what that was like? Yeah, I... I uh... <laughs> 
First of I'm all, getting sure, the award. I, I, I'm not sure they were expecting me to speak as long as I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I took it as you and me share that, you man. know, <laughs> to get a, to get a little bit of plug into our efforts. But uh, you know, one of the things that I spoke about, which unfortunately hadn't come to fruition, but uh, I reached out to ABC Nightly News uh, wow. uh, to see if they would consider doing. Uh, a spot which they do, you know, human interest kind of spot at the end of their broadcast most days. And I'm thinking, you know, this is a, a much different spin on what they usually have. I think it would be fantastic if we can get them to and think That's about the kind idea. of profile and awareness. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, uh, I think people need to know that there are individuals in our community that are so fortunate and, 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 and that we get to live in such an absolutely magnificent place that we, we're going to go to any effort we can to care for it. And I think that if that word gets out in that kind of mechanism, it's going to be really inspirational. Now, whether we can get there, I, I can't guarantee it, but I think between the two of us constantly looking for opportunities yeah. to bring awareness to what is, you know, such a basic cause of, like you, you, just, you were describing, the, the, consider it the entire area, our backyard, you know, and that we're going we're gonna to take care of our backyard. And let's just hope that, the, that we're able to engender that mentality with ever-increasing numbers of people because then the burden becomes light. Exactly. If we all do a little bit, yes. it does mean a lot. And so you talked about such things when you were accepting the award in yep. front of the commissioners and elaborated a little bit. And were you nervous? Were you proud? Or like, what was that feeling like? A little bit of several feelings, I bet. Well, the, the fact is that, um, you know, you have carried the ball since I began this program so much more so than I have that, you know, your absence was conspicuous because I, you know, had to uh, kind of scramble because I had let the, the program lay fallow and you'd been the one. So when you weren't part of it, I had to kind of go through a scramble about what I wanted to say. But, you know, the fact of the matter is I have been continuing to do the basic thing, and that is I, I, I try to, to pick up trash when I ride my bike, and I ride pretty much daily. And so, you know, I, I, I kind of just use that as a springboard to say, okay, what do I want to say about this? And again, I, I think it, it can help people's mental outlook if, if they can just try it and, and uh, you know, join us in this effort. Yeah, just experience that feeling. You know, just try it. Pick up some litter. See what it feels like. Yeah. And you may want to do more. A lot of people go, wow, one piece, I could pick up three pieces. Or it may hear, not be their cup of tea. Or it may not be their thing. Maybe they have other ways. Like some yeah. people like to work trail crew. I worked RFOV for many years. I love trail crew. I'd love to do both. You know, there's, there's many opportunities, right? Some of us, you know, the litter thing is low-hanging fruit. It's an easy thing to do. My wife, when I first started this, <laughs> used to look at me like I'd lost my mind. And now, <laughs> now she's, she's doing even it. more aggressive than I am. <laughs> I love that. Aggressive picker up or go girl. She's go. at it, you know. And, and we kind of have this combination thing because <laughs> she can pick it up and stuff it in my backpack because trying to get that backpack off to stuff trash in is a pain in the neck. So oh. we have a kind of a dynamic going. Like, you know, I sit there like the mule. <laughs> and she <laughs> stuffs stuff in the pack and then we go on our way. You know, it's we've done our bit. You know, it's teamwork. Yeah, I know another friend, and there's many friends. I want to say this too, that don't, that can't necessarily make a trash crush community event. By the way, let's plug it. It's this Friday, September 13th. We're going to meet at North Star Nature Preserve Southgate parking lot, which is the main parking lot at North Star, at 10 o'clock. Get everyone outfitted. Safety vest. Talking about the bright orange again. Safety bags. Bright orange bags. And teams of two. So we're going to make it as safe as possible, field people out to their maybe their favorite sections of road or bike path. We're getting every road and bike path coming out of Aspen. We'll clean up for about two and a half hours, wrap up at 1230. We'll have lunch, a picnic lunch at Coke Park from like 1245 to 130. And then that'll be it. It's a quick it's a quick half morning. When, when did you start the special awards thing as part of this? And then about several years ago, I added special awards for, say, like, 
most valuable, most exotic, most reusable, most gross litter. <laughs> and we give special awards at the lunch. And then we show off the jerseys and we're taking a wait list for when we print Pristine Rider jerseys again. And we hope to print another 300 in the near future as mm -hmm. soon as we can get some fundraising. And uh, right now we have our page on Facebook, Pristine Riders. So people can like the page. That will be another way they can follow us until we launch the website, which I plan to do this winter. And that will facilitate more fundraising, more awareness, sharing the message like we're doing today is where the real power lies. Mm. As much as it's important to be a vacuum in a vacuum, in other words, pick up that piece of litter, but if no one necessarily saw it, like it still matters, it's still really good. But when you share it and you create the multiplier effect, that's what gets me like really excited. Mm. All of a sudden, exponentially, thousands of people are seeing this. I've been messaged from families in Minnesota that said, Eric, when we walked the line, and I almost cried, I probably will today. When we walked around Lake Minnetonka the other day, we filled a bag of litter after we saw your post on Facebook. I'm like, that in Minnesota, mm -hmm. like, but you never know. Mm -hmm. That's where the power lies, though, yeah. is the sharing. So not just picking it up, just one, sharing the message is gonna be the next step. Then you get the multiplier effect or the ripple effect we really need, right? Yeah, you know, and on the other side of the coin is that when you ride long stretches of uh, the roads that we ride around here or trail and there's absolutely no trash. I mean, it's like I go back to that Dan George, Chief Dan George, makes my heart sort of like a hawk. I mean, it is truly incredible. And, uh, you know, we've, cr we've given reverence to where we live and now you get to revel in it, you know. That, that feeling of satisfaction and joy and pride and ownership and stewardship and all that is like, wow, look at it. This is the way it should be. I'm proud. And that's the least I can do, right? The least exactly. I can do. That's the why least. I'm glad you say the, the, the give back is like we cannot lose sight of the fact that we have to be so grateful for our existences and the opportunity to live here. And it's like. The low-hanging fruit means that you can't just necessarily grab air pollution and right. shut off construction noise pollution or whatever, but you can grab litter. Simply bend at the waist and pick up the waste is another one of our adages. It's easy. You can do it. Here's the thing, though. Use gloves, and that's the beauty of bike riders. We usually have gloves on already, or a pet pickup, which are available pretty much free mm -hmm. everywhere because mm -hmm. you're not going to want to touch that piece of litter with germs on it. Mm -mm. Eliminate the main objection, which is that is dirty litter, and yep. that is correct. So you want to do or grabbers. I see the ladies who pull up their old Subarus up by the Winter Gate, going up towards Independence Pass, and they're out there grabbing and grabbing. I stop and chat these ladies up. I was like, you know what? Would you be my surrogate grandma? Since I lost mm -hmm. both my grandmas, because I love you, man. Like, <laughs> but they're out. Pick it up safely is the point, right? Because we don't want people, you know, yep. again being unsafe about it. Yep. So that's cool. So what's what's it about biking, Kent? Let's get down to the very basics, the nuts and bolts. What is it about being on a bike that you love so much? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of pose this to you is that, I mean, I've been sort of riding a bike as we discussed on the first show nine years ago with a Schwinn Stingray, but yeah, I still, <laughs> when I, come out of like a sweeping turn and that bike comes up square like that yeah. it is like being on a steed yeah. and and the the symmetry of the that bike just gliding along you know it's it, it it still is almost transcendental almost you know it's it's like so cool that i still just r love riding a bicycle such an extension of your body, right? Yeah. Can you feel that oneness? Like Bill Murray, be the ball, but, be the bike. No, but, no, 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 no. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you know I, I tell bike. you one thing is, man, I have learned the hard way yes. to pay attention yes. every second. Yes. Because you can go down so fast and so hard, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. I, you, I don't know, it was probably eight, nine years ago, I was riding at Holland Hills and I came to a speed bump on that bike trail. It was, and I hit it obliquely, and just slipped like that, right? Slammed to my back. 
And I, I thought it was okay, but on day four, my wife says, you know, you're looking a little gray. So uh, she goes, you need to go to the doctor. So I, <clears throat> I went to see Purnell, and he was looking at this x-ray. He goes, come over here. He goes, do you see that? You don't have a lung here. You've got a collapsed lung. Get to Aspen Valley Hospital. <laughs> they, did, they did a pneumothorax. So, you know, I, 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 since that particular one, I, you know, I'm, I'm riveted. But the problem is a little bit is the curse that I gave you is it's a little distracting while you're looking for trash, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. Not as bad as a stupid bike computer, but it's still distracting. <laughs> so the main thing in teaching all these different kinds of cycling now, just completing our 29th summer, the visual focus is absolutely the most important thing because we go where we look. Basically, the hands follow the eyes on the bicycle. It's like tree skiing for skiers or snowboarders. We're looking at the openings, not the trees. So it's really critical. <laughs> well, now's the time, Kat. <laughs> We're going to step you up to the next level. I like to say pedal to the next level. And instructors, no joke, um, can give a lot of value that way to create more awareness, to focus on the skills that it takes, to start to kind of cut down, you know, new skills mean new thrills and less spills and hospital bills. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's working on these nuts and bolts skills. Yeah, pulling over all the way to the right side, then look at the litter, look both ways at the traffic, pick up the litter, you know, be really focused on what you're doing but you want to make, yeah, full stop, get all the way off, then focus on the litter. Because we need to look where we want to go on a bicycle. And don't try it if, if the shoulder is too steep. Yeah. You'll, <laughs> you'll get launched. Yeah. We don't want anyone to. You know. Know. It, it, gets a, it gets a little, it gets, you know, you're clambering down those spot. slopes and going, oh, I'm getting a little sleep, you know, for this stupid bottle of beer. Well, like, like old Snowmass, where you were initially inspired and funded by the, your old Snowmass HOA, correct? Well, it was a, the the, no, no, it was a, the uh, Capital Creek Caucus. Oh, Capital Creek and Caucus. And the reason I went that route is so that I would have a nonprofit. So when people donated for the jerseys, it was going to a nonprofit, and this was just an arm of okay. what they were willing to do for us at that point. But I was going to say, a lot of the roads in that area don't necessarily have a shoulder. It's no. just a drop-off. That's true. So, you know, I think, again, pick your battles, pick where you think is safe, well, where you're learn comfortable. To learn to hang out in the bar ditch while you do your business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ken, in closing, get any final thoughts for 30 seconds before you earn the rest of your cookies that you haven't eaten yet? <laughs> What would you like to share about pristine riders? Well, I, 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 I just hope that our numbers continue to increase so that, you know, we can go f all around our valleys and more and more days we see no trash. Yeah. That's my reverential hope, you know, because where we live deserves it. I agree. I agree. It should be pristine. And the least we can do yes. is, is try to make that happen and share the message. Did you have fun on the show today? It's been a pleasure and an honor to have you back on the local show. I tell you, I, I really enjoy the dynamic I have with you because I, I think, you know, we're so single-minded that the interplay goes very nicely. I agree. I agree. Very positive trash talk with you and I. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ken Plackmer, for all you thank do. You. And thank, thank you. you guys. <laughs> Can't wait to have you back. Thank you guys for watching this week on The Local Show. At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. At the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Join the string beans in helping reduce food waste in our community. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. 
Collect unused scraps for compost. Ask for smaller portions in restaurants. Take home leftovers to eat later. Donate unopened food to our food bank. Let's work in concert to reduce food waste. Locally owned and operated, Local Spirits has low prices, a convenient location next to Exxon Gas Station with parking, and is Aspen's exclusive cigar dealer. 3% back with our loyalty program. Carla Hope Miller, an astrologer and sonic alchemist at the Hope Barn, invites you to discover peace and tranquility through her transformative sound healing sessions. Utilizing a harmonious blend of sound bowls, chimes, gongs, and other instruments, Carla guides you on a journey of inner connection, helping you come home to your soul. Welcome to the local show.